Hey YouTube, it's Wisconsin Shoe Guy here, and thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Adelaide's Made in Spain. Uh, I've brought uh, three uh, examples that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first of all, what is an Adelaide? An Adelaide is a shoe that has this U throat um, right here. Uh, they may or may not have a cap toe. They may or may not have heel caps. Uh, and they may have medallions, they may have just simple broguing, or they may have none at all. Uh, I even have a pair of Adelaides that's made in England that has no broguing at all, uh, and it's called an austerity Adelaide, but it has that classic U-throat here, uh, which is uh, part of what makes the design on the shoe. Now these are Oxfords, uh, meaning that the uh, lacing is uh, connected to each other, so it's not open, there's no flap, and um, Generally speaking, they are slicker shoes, uh, really designed for um, dress, uh, although you do get them in various materials. So you can get those that are um, very dressy and you get those that are, are moderately more casual, uh, like a suede or something like that. So uh, now in Spain, uh, there, there are a number of brands that are very, very high quality uh, that I wanna point out. I have a, um, a pair of Adelaide's that's coming from Carmina. Uh, which um, is why I decided to do the video, but I um, don't have them yet. Um, so um, I'm, I'm waiting for those. But uh, this is, uh, as I said before, this is from J. Fitzpatrick Footwear. This is the sunny side, and this is in this beautiful gold museum calf. Uh, so you can see, as you see it in the light, the, the differentiation in color. Really like the way the museum calf comes out, and I love the way that uh, J. Fitzpatrick's uh, footwear um, really takes a different look at classic shoe designs. So here, this is the Adelaide. It's a very classic design. I believe it's first uh, came out uh, from George Cleverly. And um, what, what Jay Fitzpatrick did differently was rather than the depth of the added layer of leather uh, around the U-cap, they just did a punch U-cap. Um, they punched and stitched it so that you can clearly see the design. But this is basically like a regular um, Captail Oxford that they just put that design into. So again, that's Jay Fitzpatrick. They, they do this really, really well. Actually, Justin Fitzpatrick does this really, really well. Um, and I'm a big fan of his line. Um, and that is a perfect example of, uh, you know, what he does that's great. Now, obviously, the um, he would probably look at the laces and <laughs> cringe a little bit. I like to have uh, big, colorful laces. I actually did a, a video on laces. Uh, if you're interested, that uh, you can check out on my channel. But uh, it's a uh, it's a very nice line. Now his soles, the sole work that they do, is really really fantastic. This is closed channel or blind stitch, um, and uh, so it's not hammered together. They actually peel a layer back, do the stitching, and then they um, cover it back up. So eventually this will wear. Um, and I have a pair of Meermans right now where it is starting to wear, and I showed that on a video. But um, in these particular shoes. Um, they, they last, I mean, I feel like this leather uh, lasts almost as long as JR leather. Um, and I haven't had them that long, so I've only had these for about 18, 20 months. Um, so I can't say that for absolute certainty. Um, I have pairs of JR uh, shoes that um, I, I've not redone the soles in 15 years. So um, I have very high expectations of these, but based on the wear so far, I've probably worn these two dozen times and normally you would see absolutely no brown left, right? And uh, so I, I feel like they're wearing very, very well. So J. Fitzpatrick, Adelaide, traditional um, Adelaide with a twist, um, which I really like. Now, um, the other brand that I, I, I chose to, I actually have two other brands that I chose to, to highlight today. This is a TLB Mallorca. So um, also made in Spain. Uh, this is um, part of the Mallorca um, shoe empire, if you will. Um, they've got some really, really solid, uh, solid factories there, um, including Carmina and um, TLB, which are both uh, relatively well known. Now, um, what TLB is, is it's a bespoke house that started making uh, ready to wear shoes. And so um, they do a lot of really, really fine details like this fiddleback waist, like this narrow, narrow waist. Um, this is probably the narrowest waist I own. And um, they just do a really, really solid job with it. And um, if you look at the way the heel is cut, that heel is cut so that the shoe is really on top of it, kind of bulging a little bit. Now, give you some example of, you know, comparing the two. And it's clearly, I'll make sure that the lighting gets there. 
but the, it's clearly narrower. Um, even the heel itself is narrower on the TLB than it is on the J Fitzpatrick. So just really exciting the way they do this. This is when you start looking at what the finer shoemakers do, and uh, you know when you start looking at spending eight hundred dollars for a pair of shoes instead of three four hundred dollars for a pair of shoes, um, that's where it starts to to really separate. Uh, is in details like that, like the waist, like the fiddle back, like the heel, like the leather heel stack being made of really thin layers instead of thick layers. Uh, there's a lot of really just fine details. Uh, you can look at the uh, the fudging. Um, on this. Um, I had long discussions with my friends about this fudging and whether or not it actually had stitching in it because I couldn't see the stitches. And it turns out that they actually match the fudging lines with the stitch lines. So it's harder to see the stitches. Now, if you look really, really carefully, you can see it, but you also, and I know that it may be hard to see in the light, but the fudging goes all the way across. Um, the shoes. So just uh, here, I'm going to see if this, um, this is what happens when you film live. Just want to make sure that you can see, see how that fudging goes all the way across there. And then, I mean, the stitches are just so far inside, it's very hard to see them. But you can see them in there now when I have that particular angle on. So it's really, it's just a really fine example of good workmanship and TLB Mallorca is right up there. Um, so I would say, TLB Mallorca may be um, number two on my list in Spain, with Carmina being number one, um, J. Fitzpatrick being number three in a very, very, very close race. Um, really like them. Now, uh, there are a lot of other makers in Spain, and uh, they do a lot of good jobs. And for all I know, some of these other brands that that I own, um, and I'll actually post a, a, a video on this with um, uh, like all my Spanish shoe collection. But um, this is another Adelaide, which I wanted to highlight. And this is an Amblier, uh, which is also made in Spain. This is obviously suede. And um, what, uh, what I like about this is that it has a very, very basic rubber sole, uh, which is very different for this level of dress shoe. Uh, now, what do I mean by that? A lot of uh, talk on the forums about formality of shoes and and what can I wear with suits and what shouldn't I wear with suits? And if you're um, wearing a, an Oxford, a lot of people feel like Oxfords are the only shoes you can wear with suits. I disagree, I wear derbies too. But um, if you do feel like Oxfords are the way to go, then the question becomes, well, what leather does it need to be in order to be formal enough to wear with a suit? And obviously, you know, if you're wearing a turtleneck with a suit, you can get away with suede um, or, or otherwise. Otherwise you want something with more of a high shine. Um, you know, uh, I happen to work in an industry where we don't wear ties. Um, so if you're um, in tech and you don't wear ties all the time, then that is something that uh, you can also get away with suede and, and with some other, uh, you know, less formal options. But, uh, and it all depends on your industry and, and it's up to you to know kind of what's appropriate. But uh, I would say that uh, the suede uh, is a great addition to your wardrobe and suede with a rubber sole. Uh, takes that level of formality down just another notch. So if you have the leather sole that makes it, you know, that's the level of formality. Then you have the, the suede that takes it down another notch. Then you have the, the, the rubber sole that takes it down another notch. Now these shoes are a little bit less formal than your regular um, Oxford, Capto Oxford, because they have broguing, which also is a notch down as well. So now there's a lot of discussion on shoe forums on whether or not the broguing is more or less of a notch than derby. I don't know. I mean, that there, there's all kinds of discussion about it. Candidly, I think it's really up to the wearer. Uh, you all have to find your own personal style. And I don't think that uh, most people are enough of a judge of that. Um, you know, unless you happen to be the person who paparazzi is following around, I don't think that you're going to have issues where somebody's questioning the formality of your footwear unless you're wearing espadrilles with a suit. So, in any case, this is a, and that was a over the top example. So this is a very, very good example of a suede cap toe Oxford. Um, and it has that Adelaide U throat, a very wide Adelaide U throat, which I like. It has beautiful caps on the back. The caps come all the way up here. Um, some caps only come over here. So I like the fact that these are longer. Um, and, you know, just the distribution on this, I think is very, very good. Uh, the last shape itself, is very good and it allows you to have a clean 
uh, look as you're going. Now, we talked about the fudging before. This has no fudging, <laughs> none at all, um, on the welt. So um, that that is a level of detail that you're just not going to get with an Amblier, which is, an, I believe it's an in-house brand for the Sabbath. I've never seen it anywhere else. Uh, but it's a very, very good shoe. Uh, if you um, are looking for a shoe that is um, easy on the budget and very, very high on quality and style, uh, this is a decent shoe. Man, I've really been happy with it. Um, I was uh, looking at getting a... Uh, uh, George Cleverly Adam and bemoaning the price to a friend of mine. And he said, Hey, give these a try. Worst case scenario. Um, you can make them into a beater because they're only a few hundred bucks. And uh, I did not. And I'm really happy with the shoes. So uh, now that's, um, so that's Amblier. So I have Amblier. Dave Fitzpatrick. Okay. And TLB Mallorca. Uh, these are all relatively round lasts. This has a little bit of a chisel in it. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to help um, answer a question about a chiseled last because um, I think people are always asking, you know, what's the big deal? Do I want it? Do I not want it? So I pulled a shoe out of my collection, which is this. And this is a Crockett and Jones Westbourne. Um, and you know, what, Crockett and Jones is very narrow waist. Um, they do stitching in the sole, unless you're doing the hand grade, which their shoes are made entirely by hand. Uh, but um, these are, um, a, a, it's a very, very different look. But if you look at this chisel last, this is a very, very sharp, um, almost point um, to the shoe comparatively. And so you'll see, this is just a little bit on the wider side. Um, this is, um, just on the narrower side, and it has a little bit of a square edge there. Uh, this is more of a rounded square. But um, now some people actually like shoes with a square toe. Um, like you'll see that on the deco line from uh, Gaziano and Gerling. This is, um, you know, you want to look at what is comfortable for you. Um, you know, a lot of folks, especially um, shoe aficionados, really hate the square toe. So it's got to be something that you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with chisel lasts not very comfortable with really square last. So that's something that uh, we, we all, uh, you know, that's a deeply personal thing and something that uh, you look at. Now, what I like about these is that they have the same kind of lift on the sides that the TLB does. So uh, if you look at the way it rises here and then has that little corner goes over there, I really like that. And that's something that the Crockett and Jones does really, really well. I also think that that is a hallmark of a shoe that would make a good hole cut or last that would make a good hole cut is when it has that toe. Um, I think that that makes it a really fine looking example. So anyway, this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this was a short video on Spanish Adelaide with a uh, guest appearance by Crockett and Jones Westbourne. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.